I see a lot of videos on YouTube and some of the videos tell you why their shock system is the best. Um, and some of the videos go into super technical analysis on these shock systems. Um, I'm gonna try to be somewhere in the middle. If I tell you something's the best, I'm lying because nothing is the best. Nothing will work the best for everybody, right? Um, every application is different. And I'm not gonna get the technical stuff. I'll try to put this more in layman's terms. And hopefully this is gonna be a little bit different than most of the videos you watched and helps you answer any questions because I get these questions a lot. For, you know over a decade but it's mostly rock crawling and a rock crawling world I have a trailer queen and you know when I blow the shocks I just get new shocks and that's just the way I am I just have the time blowing these damn shocks um, every trip but in the overlanding world I'm pretty new so I started on a foreigner I don't know four years ago or so and I got what everybody told me to get which was the king suspension and since then I moved on to various other suspensions as you will see but with the Kings, they worked fantastic for the first couple of months. But I wheel a lot and I wheel hard. And then eventually I started, you know, damaging them and having to get them, having to, you know, have uh, get them to be rebuilt. And that's when I started getting major issues. Then I moved to Elka's on my wife's corner and um, on the GX. And I'm, I'm sitting on rat flows that are going to be going on this rig. So I have some experience with this stuff. Let me kind of go into how to choose a suspension. I cannot tell you what will work good for you because every single suspension is tuned differently, even if it's off the shelf parts. That's important to know. And I don't know why a lot of people don't want to hear that, but a King suspension is going to be tuned very stiff. It's really going to be good for bombing in the desert. It's also going to require rebuilds way more often. Um, I would show you that, but my kink suspension is not stiff, and I'll tell you why in a second. Rad flow, for example, this is a rear uh, long travel, but you know, standard just tube rad flow, 2.5. I can't compress this. My life depended on it in this position. Maybe if I put my weight on it, but not in this position. So I can tell you just like, just looking at it and feeling it, this is gonna be tuned fairly stiff. Um, and which is great for bombing in the desert, right? And it's gonna be good for on road with the right coil combination, we'll get into that later. Whereas an Elka, which is right here, um, I can compress with my hand if I try really hard. There you go, it's compressing and now it's moving up. Uh, so this is more softer, which is great for longevity um, and honestly, from my experience, based on, you know, the Elka's great for overlanding, in my opinion. Um, but there's also other factors, right? If I would get those rad flows and I'd be on a stock foreigner, I would hate my life. It would be the stiffest thing in the world, probably. At least the way that, that specific tube is tuned. I'm not sure maybe they tube them differently for me, but I'm just kind of explaining. Um, with the Elka's, I'd be pretty happy. So I've heard, like... I believe that, for example, King, they tune their off-the-shelf parts for, you know, for more loaded vehicles with heavy, you know, built-out rigs. Whereas I think I heard an interview with Fox saying on uh, Running for Tacos channel, actually, that they tune their suspension more for like stock weight. So off-the-shelf. Um, every single manufacturer is going to be tuning it based on different weights, based on what they believe would sell more or is a better overall ride quality, right? Keep that in mind. This little adjuster lever here is not a golden button or something. In reality, the Kings have one adjuster. My Elkas, they have two high speed and low speed. Side note, high speed and low speed doesn't mean high speed driving and low speed driving. It means like, you know, fast compression, like, you know, bumps and then like turning slow compression. Um, those buttons don't really do much. And with Kings, I, for me, it felt like it was a five, 10% variant. With Elkas, it feels more like a 20% variant, which is nice, but it's still, you know, 
if I put 300 extra pounds on my back, that button's not gonna make my right quality the same as if I didn't have those 300 pounds. Keep that in mind. Therefore, the first question is how much is your rig weigh? And then go get a shock system based on that weight. Call the manufacturers, don't trust Google, and tell them, hey, I'm, I have a thousand pounds in my rear. Is your shock system good for me off the shelf or not? And they'll be honest with you. That's the first thing. The second thing, and probably the most important, and the reason why I chose Radpo for this build, because I was not happy with King. I'll just be honest with you. What happened with King is I think I put a couple thousand miles, maybe like 5,000 miles on them, which a lot of off-road miles from those 5,000. And I ended up having to have them rebuilt and then have to have them built again. And the rebuilders that I was dealing with didn't do a job that I thought was adequate. So I said, screw it. King is right there in Orange County. I drove to King. I gave them my shocks thinking they'll do a good job rebuilding them, right? And when I got my shocks back, one of the shocks, I don't know if you could tell, I could pull it out, I could put it in, but it's not functioning, right? So I went to King, I told him, hey, King, here's my problem. You guys didn't rebuild this properly, take a look at it, no problem. Come back in a month, you pick it up again, same issue. And then I did that one more time, so three times total. And all three times they did a, they weren't, they didn't rebuild it, but they charged me for it. And then I had another problem with my uh, hydraulic bump stops with them as well. So I learned really fast that King may have been the best out of the box system that I tried to that point. But if I can't get them rebuilt, you know, it's a three, four, five thousand dollar system that I only get five thousand miles from. Hell no. So King has been crossed off my list. Um, and the reason why I went with Radflow for this rig is exactly that same reason. I hear good things about Radflow, we'll find out eventually, but they are local to me. Um, they did custom stuff for me, and I am hoping that when I need service servicing, they will be able to properly service the shops they built. So that's why I went with Radflow. I hear really good things about ADS as well. Um, you know, so they're, they're in Arizona though, but, that's another company that I hear for custom stuff. I went with Elka's because A, I loved the ride quality. I'm, I don't know why, it just, it worked. Um, even though it's not built for, you know, high speed or whatever, it just worked perfect. Number two is based on the way they build their shock. It's made for, you know, longer time frames between serviceability. That's because it's a little softer, right? Um, it's more spring dependent, which is fine with me for that application. The whole point of that whole story was the second reason, the first thing is weight. The second thing, how you choose your, your shock systems. These are all shocks that are gonna need to re be rebuilt. You don't wanna be buying new shocks every 10,000 miles. F go with a system that is easy for you to get rebuilt. So that means that find somebody that, either a rebuilder that's local or a company that is extremely reputable on rebuilding when you ship them in. I'm not sure who is right now, but Find somebody that your local, that a local builder that would recommend a shock that they are happy working on, and that's who I'd go with, honestly. Um, I used to have a local builder, retired, but when he told me to go get whatever shock system, I just went blindfolded because as long as he's happy working on them, I'm happy to buy whatever brand and he can custom tune them for me to do whatever I want anyways. So there are other brands we're not discussing here, like Bilstein's, I hear good things, Icon, Icon, um, who else? Fox, sometimes hear good things. Um, and that's because I don't have experience with those. Some of those may be better um, off the shelf, some of them may be worse off the shelf based on the way your vehicle and the application. But I'm just, like I said, unless my local builder tells me to go to Icon, I'm not touching Icon because I don't know how they're gonna be when it comes to serviceability. They may be great, I'm not saying anything, I just don't know. So, the next question I get a lot is what shock should, what shock should I get? Triple bypasses, quadruple bypasses, um, seven sets of 3.5s in the rear, and I'll address that right now. On my wife, wife's foreigner and the GX, which I wheel pretty hard. I mean, don't get me wrong, I wheel, they wheel, but I wheel too. Um, I'll go 50 in the desert on them all day long. 
I have standard 2.5s with, you know, Alcas with an adjustable reservoir, two, two sets of adjustability. And I'm happy with them. I wouldn't even want to go harder, you know, more and more advanced. For this rig, <coughs> this is the front coilover. Well, it has an eight inches of travel. And try not to beat it up. And this is the secondary front, which is a second, which is another 2.5 with eight inches of travel. So two fronts, uh, two shocks for the front. And that's a triple bypass as well. And then the rear is getting this, which is a triple bypass 3.0. Why? Because on this specific rig, I plan on going 50 in the desert for, you know, sometimes six hours nonstop, that's why. So the, the size of your shocks, really the 3.0, 3.5s, whatever, really that's just to keep more oil in there so you can go faster longer without getting them hot. Um, most people aren't going that fast. And even on my wife's rig, if I'm bombing through a desert at 60 miles an hour, I'm doing it for a minute or two and then I'm coming the hell down again. So you don't need anything bigger than a 2.5. Most people don't. The triple bypass, blah, 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 is just other options for adjustability which I'm not trying to fine tune my wife's rig every single time because then I'm going to be spending, my head's going to explode from that much adjustability. You really don't need it. Um, if you tune your rig properly and just get it done once from the start, get it perfect on the street, get it a little bit, a little bit stiff on the street. So therefore it's really um, good off-road and high speed desert if you want, if that's what you're going for, or a little bit soft on the street and it'll be good for slow speed desert and rock crawling. And that's pretty much it. And don't touch anything. That's what I do. Um, but to get that dialed in right isn't only the shock. And that's what people tend to forget for some reason. It's also the coil, which is different for every application. On my rig, I had a King front with a 550 pound coil, which worked perfect. On that same rig, I would need an Elka front with a 650 pound coil to work perfect because it's off the shock. So every coil is going to be different based on your weight, your rate, your application. On the rear, on my wife's Forerunner, I, on the GX, I just plugged and played because I guessed correctly with the co rear coil and it worked. On my wife's Forerunner, I went to like four or five sets of coil until I found the right coil, coil for the rear to make everything work perfect. So you have to tune it based on the weight of that rear, um, based on the shot that you have, based on your driving style and so on. Right now on this rig, I have, um, Metal Tech HD progressive springs, and that's because I want the mid travel rear. On the GX, I have an OME 898, which I believe is this one. The Foreigner, which has basically the same exact weight as the GX in the rear, and it's the same vehicle basically in the rear. I put this on, and it just it was too soft, way too soft. So I went to an OME 899, which is stiffer, and I put that on, and it was too stiff. And then I was recommended a Toy Tech, I think it's RCCHD. I put that on and it was too soft. I really tried to avoid Dobinson because I didn't want to put a progressive on my wife's foreigner. It doesn't need the mid travel. That's what a progressive gets you. What a progressive is, is I don't have one here because it's in my wife's foreigner, is a coil like this, but you're going to get the bottom side. This section is going to be tighter together. And really the top coils are usually rated for less weight than the bottom coils. And it just, it works really good off-road. And they say that it doesn't work great on-road. So I didn't want to put a progressive in there. But then I put in a Dobinson 701 progressive and it actually worked better than all of these. So, you know, changed my mind about progressives, honestly. But more importantly, um, my whole point here is every single application is gonna be different. You can't just go recommend a coil to somebody and say it works for me so it's gonna work for you because your weight's different, your driving style is different. What you want out of the driving of your vehicle is different. Do you want your rig to drive like a Mercedes or like a BMW, right? Um, the GX drives like a BMW because that's my partner's rig and he, that's what he wanted and it drives perfect, better than a BMW. My wife's foreigner, I could have had it driving like a BMW, but she wanted it to drive like a Mercedes. So it's driving like a Mercedes. That's my whole point. You gotta figure it out. And sometimes it takes time or some people just say, screw it, I don't care if I have a shitty ride because I have a cool sticker on my shocks. So that's pretty much it. I mean, I hope the bottom line here is that you learn A, weight substantially matters. So finish your build out, then go spend five Gs on a 
system that is based on that weight. B, serviceability is extremely important. So make sure you go with a company that is gonna be good at servicing your shocks and preferably somebody local, like a local you know, shock guy that can service your shocks, go with whatever he recommends maybe. And C, this is gonna take a little more time and effort than just buying off the shelf plugs based on what's recommended on Facebook. Or go buy off the shelf system what's recommended on Facebook and uh, you know you might be happy with your ride, you might not, but you may never know the difference, so who cares. Um, the other option, and which is the option that I would strongly recommend if you have the time to do it, is you go to a company like AccuTune. There's probably others out there, but AccuTune is the one that I can recommend because I've used them. Um, and you tell them the weight of your vehicle, you tell them your driving style, how much time you spend on the street, how much time you spend off road, and they will custom tune the shocks for you and you will be very happy with them, I promise. I think with AccuTune, at least with my Jeep, they also send me coils and they can, and their, their policy is if I'm not happy with the ride, I can keep sending them back coils and they'll keep exchanging them for lighter coils until I'm happy with the ride for free. So that's somebody you wanna work with if you can because that's a system. AccuTune only works with King, I believe, and uh, Fox, but you know, if they're gonna be your tuners, that's who you go with, right? So thanks for sticking around for so long. This was a lot of talk. Um, like, subscribe, comment, 